All right, today's going to be fun. And when I say fun, I literally mean fun. Uh, we got one of the funny more efforts in this building today. <laughs> Writer, uh, actor, comedian, author, number one best-selling book on Amazon. Please give it up to LA's own, my man, Alex Thomas. Alex, what up, bro? Man, I appreciate the love, brother. What's your cash app? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm definitely sending that cash app to you. <laughs> um, no, what's what's crazy is um what you sound very New York. Oh, I'm hundred percent born and raised BX Bronx in the building. BX, the boogie down, the home yeah. of hip hop. There you go. 50 See? years of hip hop. Let's give it up to Cool Herc right now. He Come on, celebrate. man. Cedric and Cedar, Cedric and Cedar. Hold up, how you know about all that? Are you forgetting that I I am celebrating 30 years of stand-up comedy this month? I've been you performing in New York. I have been performing in New York for 30 years, brother. New York is like my second home. My daddy's from Harlem, okay? Even though I'm a straight South Central LA dude, he was born there, but I've New York was like my second home. You got to think about it. My first TV appearance ever, 1991, Apollo. Standing ovation at Apollo. Cut to Deaf Comedy Jam. Cut to Apollo Comedy Hour. Like, New York has always been my second city, man. So I know New York like the back of my hand. And I'm a history buff. And on top of that, I'm a hip-hop history buff. So I could talk to you about New York. You would think I was from Brooklyn or Queens or Yonkers and wherever. So you you were the dude that, that could speak your language, brother. I'm, I'm gonna keep it so real with you, and 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 I want you to pardon the disrespect, because I meant to say in the intro, thirty. This brother celebrating thirty years in the business. Do you like like like? I'm I'm a former Alex. Do you accept my apology? Nah, nigga, I'm out of here. <laughs> 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 Wait, can I cuss? Because I heard you say mother effers. I'm like, am, am I, can I not cuss? No, no, you can cuss. I, I just don't cuss. Do I have but, to but, say tush but, and rump? But, I, I but, will say the N-word all day long, but I don't cuss, which is bananas to me. That's good. I was about to say, so I said, should I replace ass with tush and rump? And stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse you, me, young lady. May I have some rump or tush? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what's going on here? No, you, you, you are, are more than welcome to speak with all the profanity that you have in your soul, my brother. Well, I appreciate that, motherfucker. So, look, <laughs> um, what I wanted to no, just <laughs> what was your question, man? Let's go, let's go. Let's take it back to the beginning. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take it back to 30 years ago. How yeah. Are you just a naturally funny dude or like, how did you even get in the business? What's crazy, man, is high school was class clown, best sense of humor. It, it, it wasn't like I was, you know, running for that. It's not like in September, I'm like, hey, vote for me, class clown in June. You know what I mean? It just, I guess I was just the silly dude in the hood. It's almost like I think of a joke that Richard Pryor did 50 years ago when he said, man, when he went to jail. And he said, man, I kept them niggas laughing to keep mm -hmm. their minds off the booty. <laughs> but in my case, I kept them niggas laughing to kick their asses from wanting me to be in the gang or do some street shit because I wasn't cut out for that. Even though I was born and raised around all of it, I was the dude that had everybody in the hood laughing. But I didn't know it was going to eventually turn into my life. I didn't, I didn't know I was going to end up being a comedian and an actor and an author and all these TV shows and movies. It, it just, my career really happened organically, man. I can't, I would be lying to you if I told you at 17 years old, I knew I wanted to be the next Eddie Murphy. No, I was, I just like making people laugh, man. It was just, it's really me. Everybody that knows me will tell you, that's really that dude. He's not something different off stage. I'm not a completely different guy. Like, no, I'll be talking to somebody, whether I'm sitting on a subway or we eating at subway and somebody be like, yo, man, you taking that to the stage? I'm like, I might. Is that some of your material? 
No, I was just talking to you and started to laugh. And now the flip side is, you know what? Because you tearing up and you laughing so hard, I might have to take that to the stage. You know what I mean? Yo, so material was just natural to me. Somebody just asked me a show I just recently did. They asked me, like, as a comedian, how do you come up with material, right? Mm -hmm. That's a question I get everywhere. And my answer, man, is truly like traveling, seeing the world. 30 years of comedy has literally brought me around the globe. I'm talking from South Central LA to Jerusalem, you know, from Maine to Spain, from Alaska to Nebraska. I perform from the Bronx to the North Pole. Like niggas think I'm lying when I say the North Pole. I did a show six months ago. Yo, stop, in the, stop wrong. Are you dude, I'm, I'm not even bullshit. I met Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. He was at the house that day, like dead serious. Oh, I have pictures with Welcome to the North Pole behind me. Do you know where the North Pole is? No, that, that's what I, I didn't even know the North Pole was a real like destination. I understand I, it, I, a I South didn't. Pole and a North Pole, but I didn't know it was a destination. I didn't either till I landed in the airport, brother. I thought it was a joke. So North Pole is AKA Fairbanks, Alaska. It is the furthest northern point before basically you get to the Arctic Circle. And it's called Fairbanks, Alaska. And it just happens to have one of the biggest military bases in America. So with that being said, uh, 1,500 people sold out theater, nothing but niggas in the Are north. Are you serious? Hold on. In Alaska? I, I am not exaggerating. I mean, it felt like I was on stage in Brooklyn. It felt like I was on stage in Compton. It felt like I was on stage in the Fifth Ward in Houston. It felt like I was on stage in Miami. It felt like I was on stage in Detroit, Chicago, because it's black folks from all over America that go to their military base. So it was it was like being, nigga, I didn't see one Eskimo while I was up there and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not even lying. It was, it happened to be one of the North Pole's coldest days ever it was 61 below brother get out of here i'm like who the hell's gonna come to a comedy what show like? like what does that even you you step off a plane and it's 61 below okay and you live in in southern california what does that even feel like to a nigga uh let me explain to you brother I, i'm born and raised in la we are wearing wife beaters on christmas my whole life it's 72 on Chris, I can tell you right now, before Christmas even comes, I'm gonna be in shorts and laying out by my pool uh, on Christmas next year. That's just how it is here, right? But you ask me what a 61 below feel back, like what Correct. it feels like? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Are you in a house right now? Yes. Do you have a refrigerator or a freezer? Absolutely. What I'm gonna ask you to do, cause you asked me, how does that feel? What I need you to do is go get, you have like a punch bowl, or like a bowl in your house, in your kitchen? Sure. Fill it up with ice and just uh, drop your nutsack in it for about five minutes. <laughs> That's how the fuck it felt. 61 <laughs> below. I'm dead serious. I had never been, when I say snow up to my nuts, but you gotta understand, there's literally nothing else to do up there. So the comedy show was a reason for these people to get out. And when I tell you they appreciate it, it was so cold, I saw a polar bear in the airport. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even lying to you. Like, let me, let me tell you the final part of the story. So one of the comedians missed their flight. It's four comics. He missed his flight. Three of us show up in the airport. The promoter picks us up. He's like, man, I got good news and I got bad news. We're like, what? One of the comics missed their flight. And we're like, okay. He goes, the next flight's not coming in for three more hours. And we're like an hour drive from where our hotel is. He goes, so if you guys want, we can stall a little time. We're like, okay, it's 61 below outside. What are we gonna do? He's like, y'all wanna hit the strip club? Did you hear me? I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. I'm, I'm, he I'm said, waiting. do we wanna hit the strip club? I was like, first of all, you must be one of the comedians on the show because that's the funniest shit 
I've ever heard. Um, they have strip clubs in the North Pole. Uh, second question was, your audio, first of all, it was more of a reply. I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. There's no way on planet Earth. I'm going to a goddamn strip club. It's 61 below in the North Pole. Dude, you're crazy. So we up in the strip club, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a too hot cocoa minimum. Uh, the strippers have turtlenecks and ski equipment on. The fuck are you talking about? A strip? We really ended up in a strip club in the North Pole, and it was the locals, you, you, like like big booty Eskimo bitches. Like you know what I mean? Like it was the craziest thing I had ever seen <laughs> in my life. You'd see a stripper with Ugg boots and like a raccoon fur on her hair. I was like, I am really far away from home right now. That was just the beginning of the trip. Yeah, man. So people ask how I come up with material, traveling around the world. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.